Hi guys, happy Thursday. Um, today's chapter um, is a continuation of yesterday's chapter. So we stopped at, um, it was going to be a long couple of days. Her mom would need to remember those words because um, they were quoting Winnie the Pooh. So, and I said that the little teaser was the pencil wasn't wrong. The pencil was right. So we're going to keep going. Mom's biopsy the next day not only confirmed she had cancer, but agreed with the pencil on the exact kind. Stage 1B, breast cancer. Just the word cancer made Ava's whole body feel like mush. But Mom dished out the news along with gravy for the mashed potatoes at dinner. As if she were talking about what kind of what book she wanted to read next instead of what kind of cancer treatment she was going to get. The doctor says they can do a lumpectomy where they only remove the actual lump. So I'll be meeting with the surgeon in two weeks and most likely having surgery next month, she said. After that, I'll probably need to have radiation and chemotherapy to make sure it doesn't come back. Next month is a long time to wait, isn't it? Marcus said. Emma's forehead wrinkled. Can't they make you better sooner? It's actually okay, Ava said, and reached over to put a hand on Emma's shoulder. She figured she'd be, she'd had longer to get used to the whole cancer thing. She could help now. She looked at Marcus. I was reading some stuff, and the kind of cancer mom has doesn't spread fast at all, so, so nothing's going to happen in a month. And the treatment has an incredibly high success rate, she turned back to Emma. That means it's easier for the doctors to help her get better. You'll need to thank your health teacher for me, Mom told Ava. What? Your health teacher? The one who gave you the homework to ask about doctor visits? Oh, I might have put, I might have put off the appointment for the field trip if you hadn't been so adamant about it. Mom poured some dressing on her salad. Yeah, Ava felt a flood of relief. She'd been wondering when her mom would ask why she'd been so freaked out about the appointment, how she could have known about the cancer before the doctors or mammogram technicians. But mom had no clue. She thought Ava was just being her usual neurotic, Boston med obsessed self. Like the time she'd been sure the big, I'm sorry, the bug bite on her knee was really flesh-eating bacteria. For once, I worried about the right thing. Well, you can stop worrying now. We're taking care of this, and I'm going to be fine. Are you going to be in the hospital, Emma? My name is Turpentine asked. For a day or two, yes, Mom said. Can I come see you there? Definitely. Well, they have Jello. In my book about hospitals, there's Jello. Mom laughed. I can ask about that. Good. And I'll make you a name tag so that the nurses know who you are. Emma nodded as if she took care of everything and started digging out canals for the gravy in her mashed potatoes. So, Mom sat down and started cutting her chicken. What else is going on with everybody this week? Marcus talked about his egg drop challenge in physics class, and Emma talked about how somebody stole Nebraska out of the 50 states puzzle in their classroom. There's a huge hole in the middle, and it never, it's never going to be finished now, and Dad said he was thinking about baked goods again. They've got this world-famous six-pound cinnamon roll in Longview, Washington, he said. I was thinking we could have a foot-long chocolate chip cookie or something. Yeah, but cookies are round, Marcus said. I'd have to be the world-famous chocolate chip cookie with a one-foot diameter. Hmm, Dad took a bite of his chicken and chewed thoughtfully. That's a lot to say. It doesn't have the same ring to it as a foot-long. What do you think, Ava? I, I don't know. She'd been staring, just staring at them all, sitting around the dinner table, eating mashed potatoes and wiping gravy off their mouths and talking about everyday things as if the cancer wasn't sitting there with them. 
how were they supposed to get through this when Emma was going on and on about missing Nebraska and Marcus and Dad were arguing over geometric measurements. Personally, Mom said, I'd rather see a five pound brownie. Yum, Emma squealed and everyone laughed, even Ava. The world was still turning. Mom had cancer and it was awful and scary, but there were still dinners to eat and dishes to clear and math tests to take. And this, all this talking about world famous baked goods and eating and laughing together, just like always, was exactly how they were going to get through. Ava couldn't imagine any other way. Next chapter is chapter 32, Like a Magic Touch. The world kept on turning through Tuesday night when Sophia came over for cookies and Ava told her the news. Sophia promised to be there no matter what. Ava didn't need to check with the pencil to know that was the truth. The world turned right into Wednesday morning, so Ava got up and got ready for school. When she went down for breakfast, she found her parents with serious faces in the kitchen. Emma went downstairs, wasn't downstairs yet, and Marcus had left early for math club meeting. What's wrong? Eva asked. It was a dumb question, she realized. Cancer was wrong. Sorry, I mean, Grandpa's not doing that well, Dad said. He looked at Mom. We're going to go see him this morning before work. Eva looked at the calendar. It was family night. Aren't we all going later? We are, Dad said, but we wanted to check in this morning, too, just for a little while. I'll still be at the store when you get home. What's wrong with him? Nothing new, Mom said, and put the plate of toast in front of Ava. He's old and his heart has been failing for a long time. Ava picked up her toast and scraped a burned edge off the crust. Is it failing more now? It seems that way. More press, Mom pressed her lips together and started peeling an apple. Should I go with you? Ava felt like she should, like she should play the song for him. It was all he wanted when she'd asked the pencil to hear Johnny Hodges in concert again. Ava knew she was no Johnny Hodges, but she was getting better. No, we just have to check in with him, Mom sounded impatient. Like it was Grandpa's fault his heart was failing. She cut the apple into perfect equal slices and put them on Ava's plate. And you need to go to school. Ava looked up at her mom's strained face and suddenly she remembered what else the pencil had said about Grandpa. What he wanted even more than he wanted to hear Johnny Hodges, he wanted her mother's forgiveness. You shouldn't be mad at him, Ava said quietly. What? Her mother made a face. I told you before, I'm not mad at Grandpa, she said. I just have a thousand things to do today. This wasn't in my plans, but obviously we need to stop by and we're doing that. Ava looked up at, at her mom. She was biting the skin around her thumb the way Ava did when she was anxious. I know, Ava said quietly. I know about the gambling and the college money. Mom's face shifted. Her eyes filled with surprise and sadness. Where did you hear about that? Marcus. Mom nodded slowly. She took a deep breath and her shoulders deflated when she let it out. Grandma Marion left that money for you and Marcus for your education. I still can't believe she didn't respect that. He didn't respect that. To take that money and gamble with it, she shook her head. It didn't help that he won like crazy at the blackjack tables for a few weeks. That just made him hunger for more. It was like he had a magic touch when he was in Vegas. And then he lost it and lost nearly every penny in the account, too. Ava's breath caught in her throat. Mom's words were knocking into her brain. Magic touch. Lost it. Magic. Could Grandpa have been using the blue pencil to gamble? If he had and he lost it, then it would explain why he started losing. But it was crazy. The pencil only answered questions and didn't make some blackjack dealer give you a good card. I'm so sorry, Mom. Mom sighed and put her hand on Ava's shoulder. 
about what happened and about not telling you the things are tough with grandpa and me. I guess I just wanted to let you keep thinking he was the same grandpa who gave you butterscotch candies and played old records for you when you were little. He hasn't been that grandpa for a long time, Ava said. It was true, at least on the outside. But what if that grandpa was still inside somewhere? He still loved Johnny Hodges, just the way Mr. Ames still loved baseball and Miss Mr. Clemson still wanted to put out fires. Ava looked at her mom. She thought about the pencil. It just didn't seem likely and it didn't matter why he'd done it anyway. You know, mom, there are scholarships and loans and stuff to pay for college. It's okay. Ava, you ready? Dad called from the door. Sophia's waiting. Yep. She turned to her mom. You know, Mrs. Galvin has a quote on her wall. The weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is an attribute of the strong. And mom tipped her head and looked at Ava. And I think you're strong. That's all. Ava gathered up her last three apple slices, kissed her mom on the cheek, grabbed her backpack, and headed out into the cool November air. Hmm. And the next chapter is chapter 33, Grandpa's Story. We're almost done with the book. Bye, guys.